Landscape photographer, YouTuber, and just good fellow Thomas Heaton once said there are six things you should photograph before you die. I did one of them and it helped me transform this into this. This video is sponsored by the artist Oxy. Check out this artist's work on foundation. Link is in the description below. All right, let's get to the video. So today we're doing a different kind of video. Generally, I'm sitting down at my desk. I've got a bit of an idea of what I want to say, and I say it, right? And today, we're going to take one out of Thomas Heaton's playbook. Of course, his playbook is amazingly vast and full of notes for these kinds of environmental shoots and everything, and mine is not. Uh, I don't even really have a playbook in this sense. We're gonna go up there, there's a photo that I wanna take. I think there's a combination of mist and a tree that makes sense. I'm not a landscape photographer, I'm a portrait photographer really. We're just gonna have to figure out as we go along. One of those things is gear, focal length. Hmm, focal length, what focal length, what lenses? Well, let's figure it out. Tripod, Leica SL2S, the 75 millimeter Similux, and the 21 millimeter. I think the 21 millimeter makes quite a bit of sense. So I don't want to take like a truckload of stuff. And this gives me a big range. So this is really impromptu. There's been two or three different videos, conceptual videos that I've been working on, which are less about gear and photography. And it's like, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck and everything. This is a cool one. I think this is a good one. I hope you like it. I've got an idea of a photo I want to take. I'm going to go out and take it. And I'm going to do one on Tom's Heaton to see if I can do it like he does it. I like his videos. He's good. I'm in a bit of a hurry because I don't want this thick fog to just completely go away and at the same time this is Switzerland baby it's not gonna go it's this is gonna stay at least for another hour but you never know you never know you never know to the Ollie mobile I'm whispering because I feel like a moron speaking to the camera and walking around I don't know how these vloggers do it really All right, so here we are. This is the, the place I was referring to. It's bloody foggy. To be honest, I'm not even quite sure. Do I have to pay? But I don't see any place where I'm supposed to buy a ticket. So you can already hear with the cars passing by that um, I'm clearly in the Alpine uh, regions of Switzerland where only goats and any standard two-wheel drive vehicle can take you. All right, let's go now to the fog. This is where I want to go. So these trees here in the background, I think it's kind of a cool shot. I already got it with my wide angle. <clears throat> and I guess this is where a zoom comes in handy, right? This is kind of the composition that I got. Actually, I think this is pretty, I think this is a pretty cool shot. Doing landscape photography in suburbia means that it's bloody clear that you are in suburbia or in civilization. It's not gonna look as landscapey as when you are in the real nature landscape kicking it roughing it in the tent and and all that good stuff all right you know like thomas tommy still though i do enjoy being out here right now funnily enough i did not expect that okay let's take another look do i have a good composition here i think i should get a lot closer to the ground but what are you gonna do Another one of the shots that I want to take, I want to get a bigger tree. I want to put on a 75 millimeter. I found a tree over there, but it's got too much of a electric wire running from it. Oh, it's a branch, actually. That works. All right, let's take a look. Maybe this is one. I'm way too close for a 75 millimeter. All right, let's go here. A guy with a Swiss accent talking about bank accounts and losing money. He's probably a chocolatier or a pastry chef. Ooh, so we've got a lot of different things going on here. So we've got this farm with, I think these are all apple trees. And in a way, I think this makes sense, right? You've got all these little points and spots of the apple trees, but I don't think it makes sense for a long focal length. This is where we're gonna go and hit that 21 millimeter. 16 millimeter in this scenario can probably also make a lot of sense, but Oh, there's the chocolatier. Let's see if we can get him with the... Let's put you over here. What you didn't see with that chocolatier was his golden retriever and the big dump 
that he took over there. The thing is, in, now in some of these shots, what I've done is I've actually intentionally included the gate and the electricity wire thing and all that. And the reason being is like, yeah, I, I want these photos to look as landscapey as possible, but I'm in suburbia. There's farmland here. There's literally cows about maybe in a farm in the farm. It would be cool if they were outside, but literally a hundred meters away from me and there's a shop and everything. In one sense, it's cool to make it as landscapey as possible, but at the same time, I feel it's important to just embrace what you're in and make it a part of the photo. That doesn't mean that it'll necessarily work, but you gotta try. I don't know if it worked out, but there's somebody wa walking over right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait till that person passes so I can get that person walking in the mist. I think that's a cool photo. All right. Good thing. Okay. Let's go over here. There's only so much that I feel I can get out of these lined up trees with wires on them. I wouldn't mind a coffee. But there is a big ass tree in front there. I want to get that one too. What's the moral of the story here? Get out of your comfort zone. I am no landscape photographer. And then start making discomfort into comfort. Because I think where the magic happens really in photography, especially from a learning point of view, that transition phase from discomfort into comfort, that's a really cool spot. Um, I am nowhere near comfortable taking landscape photography though. But it is fun, all right? And that's the other thing. Getting out of your comfort zone is fun. There's the big ass tree I was talking about. That's a really crap photo of that big ass tree. I don't want to make this one interesting. I think I'm going to do the last one. Oh, there's it. That's the tree I want. Not this tree. The one in front there. Oh, I got two. I got two of them. Let's let's see. Guys, I'm sorry for all the shakiness and everything here. But tell me, how do you feel about me doing videos out and about? As opposed to just, you know, sitting behind the desk. It's not like you'll get rid of me there. I love those talking head videos, but how do you feel about it when I'm out and about? More by the seat of the pants style. All right, this is what I'm talking about here. It's it. I love dogs, oh my goodness. Yeah, you. All right, folks, heading back. I hope I don't get a parking ticket. Seems like the cop car is gone. And we're back. Let me conclude, and I'll conclude in three parts. Gear, a universal truth, and the one thing that Thomas said we should do before we die. Well, one of six. Gear first. Now, I don't think it's much of a surprise, but most of my keepers came from the widest lens, which was my 21 millimeter Voigtlander. My favorite, however, came from the Noctilux, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the lens. Actually had more to do with the crow that flew into the composition, which I think really made that photo. I had seen them flying around before. I tried to get them into the photo, but yeah, those weren't keepers. However, for this photo, it worked out. It's lovely when it does work out. 
The 75 millimeter was a good choice for landscapes. I wouldn't mind a 200 millimeter, to be honest. There's something to be said about compression and landscape photography. Mind you, I am not a landscape photographer, so there's not much that I can say about it, but I'm pretty certain Thomas Heaton and, and others will probably have a lot to tell you about compression, long lenses, and landscape composition, landscape photography. And this leads me into part two of the conclusion, a universal truth, which in this case is comfort zone. I mentioned it before when I was walking around in the high Alps of Zurich, Getting out of your comfort zones is probably one of the best things that you can do. As a fella who doesn't make landscape photos, to then go and make a YouTube video about it is kind of out of my comfort zone, to be honest. However, I learned from it. It was a very fun thing to do. And I don't really feel that these are the worst photos I've ever taken. I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with them uh, considering. All right, let's get to the last part of the conclusion. If you haven't guessed it by now, that one of six things that Mr. Heaton said you should do before you die is shoot woodlands in fog. Specifically what he said was the fog disguises everything. The most mundane, boring world of dog poo can be transformed into a beautiful flower with elves running around. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. And trust me when I say I could not have taken you to a more mundane place than where we went to in this video. It was a dog walker's route right in the heart of Zurich suburbia. It was as mundane as it was going to get. But Thomas was right. The fog transformed it into something mysterious, into something serene, into something almost haunting. I think the fog has the potential to transform any big ass dog poo into something beautiful. So do yourself a favor. If you get the chance to photograph anything in fog or in mist, whatever it is that you want to call it, go and do it. It's fantastic. It's really, really cool. It's almost like a cheat code. So thank you, Thomas, for the fantastic tip. I'm quite uh, curious to see what tip I'm going to follow next. Uh, I think I've still got five things left to do before I die. And I'd love to hear from you. What is the next thing that you're going to photograph? If you've got some suggestions for me, let me know. And as always, thank you for stopping by. Really glad you did. Peace.